Hey y'all, welcome to the Q Spot Podcast Video Edition with your host, Kobila Jones, bringing you real and relevant conversations with an empowering message. Be prepared to laugh, cry, and take notes as we dive into the discussion. Stay tuned. My special guest is Sandy Gillespie, founder of Healing in the Hood, discussing Do Black Lives Matter Across the Board? Hello, Sandy. How are you doing? How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. (laughs) Hello to everyone out there listening and watching. Uh, We're going to just get into this conversation. I know it's an unpopular conversation and it may be a little uncomfortable for some people, but I feel like as Black people, it's time to start having those conversations peel back the layers, lift the veil, and let's really dive into some things. That's how real change is going to happen. So our topic for tonight is, do Black lives matter across the board? And I need to say this from the beginning, y'all. This is not about Black Lives Matter, the organization. That's a whole other entity. This is just a discussion about Black lives in general. We have seen the multitude of protests going on and everyone's chanting Black Lives Matter, yet it's still we're still seeing crime in our neighborhoods. And on the 4th of July weekend, crime, I'm not gonna say it was at an all time high. It's just, there's some stories that I saw that really broke my heart. And I'm an emotional person, so I really took it hard to see that babies were just gunned down in the, they were minding their own business and they just got caught in the crossfire of other things that were happening. And so do black lives really matter across the board? Do we want reform? Do we not? You know, but before we get too deep into that, I would love for my guest, Mrs. Sandy, to please give us an introduction of yourself and tell us more about your organization, Healing in the Hood. Well, uh, it's, it's good to see you again. Uh, I was, last time I saw you, we was in Jonesboro, mm-hmm. you know, in your, in your radio station, had a great time with you. Uh, my name is Sandy Gillespie. Everybody calls me BB in my hometown. Okay. All my family calls me BB. Uh, again, I have five children. Uh, um, I've been in Blavo all my life, pretty much. Uh, stayed in South Bend, Indiana a couple years where my mom was murdered. Uh, mm-hmm. Was murdered by her husband when I was at, at the age of eight years old. She was 25. Uh, she left me and my sister uh, without a mom. Uh, my sister was five or six at the time. So, um, you know, it's a good subject. Uh, do Black Lives Matter? Because, um, you know, we've been victimized by somebody that looks like us, you know. Right. And, you know, also in the area of Blytheville, Osceola, Luxor, like, not Luxor, I think Lux- is Luxor. Yeah, Lux- okay. yeah, Luxor, yeah. Luxor are right down the street. <laughs> so I'm just going to say Mississippi County, for those that are listening, yeah. they want to call me out on Mississippi County. Um, we have seen also stories of crime happening at a high rate in some of those areas. And before anyone tries to check me or come for me, I'm not even going to say BLB crime because we know that's not a thing. Crime is crime, period. Unfortunately, it looks like the numbers are higher within the Black community because our population is actually a small representation of the population as a whole. So it looks higher, but in reality, it's not necessarily higher. But that's neither here nor there today. So let's go ahead and talk about your organization. What um, are your goals and your mission with Healing in the Hood? Oh well, our mission is to uh, our mission is to empower the whole man, um, and that's uh, physically, spiritually, and, and mentally. Um, we try not to leave out any aspect as uh, as far as they go. Now, uh, we're not a religious organization. We're not tied to a specific religion or a specific belief. We welcome all. Uh, we just believe in. We believe that God has all power. Okay. So, you know, okay. so um, we don't we don't we don't uh, we don't try to sway anybody or anything like that. Uh, we don't believe in certain political views. We uh, we stay neutral. Okay. We stay neutral because uh, the, at the end of the day, we believe that we all we believe that all of us are in the, it's just a lot of puns, a lot of puppets being played by a, a bigger system. So yes. it, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me on that situation. Uh, you just got to vote for the person who tells the best lies. So, uh, <laughs> it's like the so uh, you know, yeah, who, who's the most convincing? You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, but uh, we are uh, we've been active um, 2020. 
Okay. We've now been active 11 years uh, okay. in the city of Blavo. It doesn't seem that long. We've done a, we've done a lot of things here in Blavo. We've done a lot of activities. We've helped a lot of kids, a lot of back to school drives, a lot of peace marches. Uh, we've done, uh, we've helped a lot of people. Um, we we mentor in the schools. I I was I'm a uh, I'm a volunteer basketball coach okay. at the elementary school for the last seven years. Me and my staff, me and my guys, uh, Ricky Carter and uh, Chris Brown and Jonathan Jacobs. We call him J Rowe and my nephew Michael Williams, uh, Tyrone okay. Smith and uh, James Rogers. We've been doing it for you know I, I've been doing it for seven years. Those guys came right on in to help me. Um, uh, with the uh, activities, we we go in the schools all the time. We mentor youth in the schools. We we mentor youth when parents need us to come out to just homes. So, uh, but we have, we have, we have, we now have added an element. We have an excellent program that we have added to our repertoire, okay. and it is called VOCA. Uh, okay. It's Victims of Crime Advocacy, where we've partnered with the state of Arkansas and I believe the federal government, and where uh, you know in Mississippi County, I hate to say it, uh, in Bible. Uh, but it's true. So, I mean, I have to say that we have a lot of crime uh, and a lot of the crime is violent. So uh, anybody that's been victimized by a violent crime in the city of Blauer, in the city of Miss, in, in a county of Mississippi, uh, we now are able to offer assistance as far as uh, getting them resources or getting them places. For instance, if a, if a mother has been uh, abused by her husband or abused by a, sp- a boyfriend and kids need to get away, we now have access to different resources and partnerships with different people. So that has been a great tool. That has been a great resource for us to help different people in our community. All right. So let's just kind of dive into the discussion then. It's like you are trying your best to help to reform, reshape people's minds and their way of being, you know, um, in particular black people. Um, we talk about how marginalized we are. We talk about, our lack of resource or access to lack of resources, lack of access to resources. You know, we talk about how we are oppressed and this, that, and whatever, but yet we are still hurting each other. And so in this, this climate that we're in, again, we've seen a gazillion protests and it's Black Lives Matter, stop killing us. And I'm gonna say, you know, when do we take accountability for our actions do black lives really matter to us across the board? You know, so what are your thoughts on that? And how can well, you start the reform? I I have a heads and I have a tails to that. Um, okay. the, the heads to that is um, when you look at it from when you look at it from what we see from what we see today, it looks like to us that it don't matter because it looks like all the only people killing one another is black people. Mm-hmm. But we have to. But we have to. We have to go to the tail side of that. And I had to do it. I'm guilty. I'm. 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 I'm the first to admit. I'm quick. I was quick to say it. I'm quick to say, man. I'm so. I'm so sick of. Uh, man. We talking. We always talking about police. We always talking about white people. We always talking about that. We always talking about this and that, killing us. But man, we kill ourselves at this time. This this kind of rate. But then you have to look that there that that there's a. Uh, I, I read this book. I read this book, and I'm not trying to. Uh, get anybody to 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 just believe like me, but I read this book uh, by Napoleon Hill, and it was called um, uh, the uh, the devil. This is the way the devil thinks. Okay. And uh, okay. and in one particular chapter of the book, um, he says that uh, one of the greatest tools that the devil used is propaganda, mm-hmm. media. And you think about when you look when you look in media, um, a white in a black shooting don't sell media. If I shoot a white man, it's not gonna really sell the media. Or a white man, just a regular white man shoot me, it's not really gonna sell. Now police shoot me, that'll that'll sell news. Mm-hmm. But or the Ku Klux Klan shoot me, that'll sell news or the uh, Aryan Nation or something like that. Something that'll get the media juice. But just a normal white guy or me shooting a normal white guy, it it really won't sell in the news. But the 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 thing that's been portrayed in the news and to make things look like we're savages and we're animals. Well, look, how can they say Black Lives Matter when a police kill them when they killing each other? Well, I tell my sons, I tell my kids this all the time. If you put a bunch of hyenas in a cage and give them one state, they'll kill each other. 
You know what I mean? So you got to look at some of we got, we have to look at now. I don't give I don't give access or I don't give. I'm not making an excuse for us killing each other because it ain't right. It ain't right. And I and I'm the first to say that I've been victimized not by a white person, but by my own people. Even uh, I was robbed before. I was robbed at gunpoint and I was kidnapped. I mean, at the age of 15, 16 years old, I was in 10th grade and I was kidnapped by some guys out of Forest City, me and my cousin. We were held hostage in our in our own vehicle and we were dropped off and hit in the head with a gun. Not only that, my home was broken into a couple of times and it wasn't nobody white, it was somebody looked like me. So I'm the first to say that I don't give a pass to it. I'm not saying that it's OK for us to kill each other, because at the end of the day, if a, if a black man killed me, I can't come back and tell you this story again because he killed me. But at the, at, but there, there is an underlying circumstance that caused this, you know, and it was it, it was systematic, you know, like like even today we're in a systematic system where, uh, you know, there, there was things like redlining, things like gentrifying just, just, just our neighborhood so that we can, uh, you know, the property value can go down, they buy it up and then push us out. You know, there was things like uh, gerrymandering, you know, what I'm saying the GI Bill. There, there's things that that systematically had black people. In the state we're in now, I remember one occasion, and I love this picture behind me, Dr. King. Dr. King was, was said one time that uh, 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 a white man told him that uh, black people always have excuses and they need to pull themselves up by their by their own bootstrap. And Dr. King said, "Well, how can they pull themselves up by their bootstrap when they never be, been given a pair of boots?" Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean. So we have to think, and we're not again. I'm not giving an excuse for another black man to harm you another black man to harm me, but we have to take into consideration that we didn't get here alone. In the city of Blavel, I'm, uh, there's no recreation for our youth. None. All we have is sports. So you have a young man that goes to school and if he don't play sports, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, like in Jonesboro, they may have, uh, uh, what's that, uh, when you act in and things like that, you may have uh, fine, art. fine arts, the fine arts. You, know, <laughs> you may have the fine arts, you may have uh a, a certain thing that that uh, a kid can do that you know that they would know that if they don't play sports they can do that activity. But here in Blavel, and I grew up like this, so I, I'm telling you what I know. I, I've been in Blavel all my life, and we hadn't had recreation, we hadn't had a youth center, we had now do do that would that solve all the problem? Probably not, but maybe a lot of it. If a kid can have if a kid can have a safe haven, if a kid can have somewhere to go to do his homework. So that's why uh, we are actually trying to turn our facility into a safe haven for our young people. We have computer labs now. We have five, six computers that our kids can come to. We're even going to work on a plan. I'm not going to really release that yet. But we're working on a plan maybe with some of the kids that are going to do virtual learning where we can do it in groups in our our facility. Okay. Uh, and work, work and, and do like we're supposed to do, work as a village because you know uh when I grew up I, I got to be honest my role model was not a lawyer it was not a doctor because I never seen it my role model was the guys with the big chains and the big rims and you know you know who I'm talking about so yeah. I mean and their role model was probably the guy with the big chains and the big rims or, or you know because it, everything is just passed down so uh, again I'm not I'm not saying that it's right for us to kill it, kill each other or harm one another or anything like that. And I do feel like sometimes I do feel it because I, I own my own insurance agency and I own my own restaurant. And I feel like sometime in my restaurant, 80% of my, uh, 80 percent of my customers, they, they were white people. You know what I mean? In my insurance agency, 80% of my critics are black people or 90, you know what I mean? So, I mean, you know, and I, and I have to go out of the way. I have to pop popcorn. I have to give away gifts. I have to do everything three times better than the average person would have to do if they didn't look like me. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's frustrating. It's definitely frustrating. It's definitely frustrating. But at the same time, we can't give up on each other. We have to love each other. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the minister, Louis Farrakhan. You know, I'm not a Muslim. Uh, I don't matter. In fact, I don't claim no religion. But I'm a big fan of, of, of minister Louis Farrakhan. And that's because, man, he is big on black empowerment. You know, I'm a big fan of Marcus Garvey, Dr. King, Stokely Carmichael. These are guys that I read about all the time and read about things that he did. Fred Hampton, you know, Bobby Seale. These are people that I study and, and I love the movements that they had going, you know. So, you know, I try to trace my history so that I can learn learn about it and I can help my youth and help my kids in my own home about on things that's going on. And so when I ask a question, I'm also challenging myself because I have some education and I've learned a few things along the way. 
um, when I was working on my undergraduate degree in sociology, I learned about those things you talked about. I mean, like you said, if you put a pack of hyenas in a cage and give them limited resources, that's like putting people in these, what they now call ghettos and hoods. If you yeah. push people to a corner, they are going to react out of emotion. They're frustrated, right. they're tired, they're struggling. So what do you expect? And so for those of us who have access to a little more resources, I ask you the question, do Black Lives Matter across the board? Are you willing to help your brother or sister? Are you willing to make their problem your problem? And this goes back to some Kwanzaa principles. You know, uh, Ujima, which is collective work and responsibility, Mm -hmm. We have to make our brother and sister problems our problems and reach out and help them in any way possible. I'm a big advocate for Kwanzaa. And we can actually practice at 365. We don't need to wait until December to celebrate Kwanzaa. We can put those principles in action right now. And so like you said, you have to go out of your way to just pique the interest of people that look like you. And if Black Lives Matter to us, you shouldn't have to do much of anything. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I interject right there on that part? Mm-hmm. And the funny part about it sometimes is, you know, I have a legit, I have a legitimate business. I have an office. I have a sign. My my, my insurance agency is nationwide. <laughs> so, you know, and I have people sometimes come back and tell me that uh, somebody asked them about my insurance company. And they say, man, is, is BB legit? You know, like, you know, things you wouldn't ask, a, uh, you know, not to just name call or put things you want to ask a state farm agent or you want to ask a, a farm bureau agent or a all state agent because they don't look like me. You know, so we, you know, uh, we've been told a long time that uh, when it's coming from them, it's rain, but it might be just a little bit something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> all the way around. We have right. To each other. We have to uplift each other. And That's right. we have to stop committing crimes against each other. Now, we say we won't reform. We know there are many broken systems, just starting from the top, the federal government down. Um, there are ways to fix those systems. And that's a whole other discussion of how to get in there, get your seat at the table. Better yet, make your own table, take your idea. Like, this is a whole other discussion. Right. However, when we alter and reform, I'm going to say reform our mindset and our way of being, I think then we can really start the process of healing and right. um, taking care of each other one person at a time. Right, right. And we, we're, we're so critical of, uh, we're so critical and judgmental of one another. You know, if I don't, if I don't think like you or believe like you, then I'm the enemy. Well, it's, it's been, it's been people that we've been talking to for years that don't think or believe like us, you know, I mean, but we don't question them like we question one another. You know, we question each other like, like all the time. Like, I mean, uh, uh, you can tell me now that you're you're selling umbrellas. I want to question you what size umbrella, what color umbrella, and, and all that kind of stuff. I heard Master P and Lil Romeo uh, talking. You know, they got the they got the rap noodles or whatever going. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and uh, he was saying that a lot of black people was asking him, well, how much sodium is in it. And he was like, nobody has been, they've been eating Roman noodles that don't come from America all these years. And they never asked the question, how much sodium is, uh, is in those noodles? But when it comes to me being a black entrepreneur, they want to know how much sodium is in the wrap noodles. You know, so that's the thing that we have to tend with. Uh, you have to tend with the system is number one. Then you have to tend with your own people, the mindset of your own people. And you're trying to be a CEO. You're trying to lead by example, showing that you don't have to sell the drugs. You don't have to be, you don't have to beat the system. You can do it. You can do it fair and you can do it square mm-hmm. and you can be legitimate. But all we need to do is we, we have to support one another. We have to support one another. We have no black dollars circulating in our black community. I'm a, I'm a big fan too of Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, he's big on power numbers uh, and Dr. Boyce Watkins. So, you know, I watch these guys on how they, how they facilitate and how they instruct on how you can build your economy. And it takes the dollar stand in that community. Everybody dollars stay in their community at least a day, except black people. I don't even stay in the community a day, a couple hours. You're right. Um, yeah. <laughs> as a woman, you know, who used to utilize, like, I do my own nails now. I do my own hair now. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Cut off there. <laughs> there was a time when you pay, go to the beauty supply store. People don't look like me that work there. Um, right. I run to the nail shop. People don't look. And that was what pushed me to go to school was like, I can do this 
why am I paying someone else that don't look like me to do this? <laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's and that's pretty, you know, what I'm going to tell you. I'm not anti-Semitic or anything like that. I'm I love everybody. You know what I mean? Uh, but I had a I had a friend. Uh, a couple of friends, they had they had stores in the neighborhood. They had stores over some one of my some of my friends had stores on the east side of town. And uh some one of my one of my best friends had a store on the west side of town where I grew up at. And when they had the store, they they barely saw business. I mean they, they barbecued in them, they cooked in them. I mean, they did the same thing that everybody else would do. But when they sold their store to another ethnic group, you know, when they sold their store to other ethnic group. We wanted to blend in. We we began now to flood the stores. We buying everything. We buying what the pom pom popos, whatever they be buying them little cigarillo, whatever they call the stuff. They, we, we buying everything from the store. I mean, we going up there. We hanging at the store. We doing all this stuff. But when the when the when the guy that looked like you were there, you were, you wouldn't buy a pack of cigarettes from him. So you know that to me is it's heartbreaking. You know when when I have to tell people that man. I have to go out of my way. I mean, I got to send thank you letters, which is that's part of my service. I send it to everybody. That's just how I service people. But I mean, other people don't do that. And I know for a fact they don't do it because I've been insured by other people. Okay. So you don't get a thank you letter. You don't you don't get a uh, you don't get a courtesy call. You don't get a uh, you don't got you don't get a review. You know, I do all that, but I still have to go hard. I mean, when I leave work, I don't, I don't do a physical job when I leave work, but I mentally be strained some days and it, and it physically and it takes a physical toll on my body from the mental state of my some some of my days well i'm gonna have to check out to do a uh, car insurance because as you mentioned the insurance place that i deal with which is a national brand um you know they don't send you like even just something simple as a birthday email no, you know, i do all that i send birthday cards i do more than an email i send you a card you know what yeah. i mean so <laughs> Okay, so we do have to talk about that afterwards, but well, um, I, I sold my, I sold myself a little bit on this radio thing. <laughs> so this is a free space, so hey, <laughs> Look, if anybody want to sponsor the segment, hey, you more than welcome. My information is at the bottom. <laughs> no, but for real, um, again, you know, getting back to the topic, do Black Lives Matter across the board? Do we really care about each other as much as we say we do? Do we have intentions on looking out for each other? While we want all these systems, we want Congress to change, we want the police department to change, we want the school system to change, what are we doing to change ourselves as well? Um, Angela Davis has a quote, which I love, Angela Davis. Like you mentioned all the men that you like. And I, I like Angela them. Davis too. I'm sorry, I like Angela Davis. I mean, she's one of my she's one of my icons. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all about, and it's not just because she's a female, but I actually had the opportunity to hear her speak on a live chat and she was asked about, you know, when she was out there protesting and fighting for rights for people, what did she find her courage? And she was like, I was scared, but I knew it had to be done. You know, somebody right, had, right, to do it. Right. Um, I had to do it. Um, she was willing to be that one. And we know the majority of her story, how she was in prison and right. they were trying to, I watched this uh, documentary on Netflix, um, the Black Power mixtape, and she talked about how they were trying to legally find a way to kill her in prison before she was released uh, because they just didn't like her, what she was fighting for. You know, they knew she was a smart whip and they were trying to get rid of her by any means necessary, but she got them back. She learned some right. while she was in prison and she won her case and got released. And so, she talks about, um, oh, in essence, I'm going to find the quote, but if we want to liberate, before we can talk about liberating society, we got to liberate the mind. So as you were talking about all the books that you read, the things that you watch, we that have access to the resources, we need to start educating our people, those that right. don't know what we know. So let's talk about that, you know, as a form of reform, I guess you'd say. What well, can we do? How can we start? Especially with the young people, the babies. Well, to me, you know, everything now is, is surface. It's not even deep anymore. A lot of it, we, you just said it in your sentence. You said reading. That's my problem. You know, I I, I do I do audio reading because I have a, a problem picking the book up. Not that I don't want to read or I can't read. It's just you're distracted by so many things. So I, I got my, uh, my uh, Audible app. And I just turn it on and I, I listen to these books and then 
they they intrigued me to go back and look at the the uh, paper version or the uh, hardback version, you know, because I'm actually in uh I'm actually in the middle of writing my own book. But uh, what we what we have to do is, I mean, we have to pick a book up because you know it was said that if you want to hide something from a black man, in the book. <laughs> you put it in the book, and it, and and it's sad to say that it is definitely true, and um. Uh, and it was true in my life because I, I I had people that didn't look like me knew more history about myself than me, and that was embarrassing. Mm. So you know, I had to, that that motivated me to say, you know what, to heck with this right here, man. I have to learn. I have kids that I'm raising that I would not let repeat a cycle. I would let I would not let fear nobody because of their skin color. I tell my sons, don't fear nobody. You know, people teach their kids when police come. I don't teach my kid that the police. He's a man like you know, act like you would act any other time. Because any other time, my kid will act the right way. So act like you act. No, don't act no different. Act like you act. Act mannerable like you would do anybody else. And uh, and that's just that's just your that's just your nature. So uh, to fear anybody? No, don't fear nobody. I'm not gonna fear anybody either. You know what I'm saying? So we're not we're not gonna teach. I'm not gonna teach my young men to have a spirit of fear because that's not of God. Okay. So the quote is that I said a little out of order. We have to talk about liberating minds as well as liberating society. So right. again, going back to what you just talked about, um, and then even going back further, you mentioned propaganda and how the media tries to sway our thought process. I've been working on my master's in communication, and I learned a lot in those classes. Like my mind has now become more conscious of the messages and images that are put out, and I'm looking at them from not. Uh, entertainment aspect anymore. Looking at them for the bigger picture, what is this message really saying? Is this intentional? The pictures, the graphics, the whatever. Like, if people stop and look at what's being put out there, how it's designed and organized, every little aspect of that graphic, there's uh-huh. some things that may be also hidden in that graphic that the developer knew what they were doing, but because right. we're looking at it for entertainment and getting some kind of gratification out of it. We're not paying attention to the bigger message. Exactly. Exactly. And so exactly. you mentioned about you know audiobooks. You know, some kids will say, I don't like to read, I don't know how to read. Well, audiobooks, you know, there's information. Audio book. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Same so, thing. I don't know what the public library is like there, but the one here in Jonesboro or Cricket County, they offer a program called Libby. And then they have one called AXIS Access 360. And so with your library card, you log in and you download audiobooks for free. And so right. that's one way to start getting the kids to listen or read. You know, you can either read the virtual book or listen to audiobooks. That's one way to help reform our society and get our kids right. on a different mindset because on a different path mentally. They're not gonna learn everything they need to know in school because no. they need to overhaul school. <laughs> They're definitely right. I mean, our education is probably one of our main problems and the reason that we're in the situation we're in. Um, the, the schools have to teach like a core curriculum. And right. it's almost like the kids are learning how to take standardized tests. And they're not really learning that in-depth information that's really going to help open their mind up. So when they get to college, they have this little bit of basic knowledge of stuff. And so... Again, it's up to us, the leaders in the community, to step up, take these kids, um, grab them by the hand, and teach them extra things that they're not learning in school. Um, let me ask you this. You said that there's no real centers and things, places for kids to go and hang out. Right. Yes, ma'am. So I want to ask this question. You know, do Black Lives Matter? Why can't the group of adults, leaders, come together and say, okay, there's an empty building that's been empty for 20 years or 10 years, whatever. Can yes, we pull our resources? Somebody write a grant. Let's make this a community resource, some kind of center, something. Well, can I don't know that whether to answer that right this okay. or what. Um, We're just if everybody, if, if people, if people could come together, and you you know what I mean, that's the hardest problem. That's the biggest problem that we have as a people, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. I heard, I heard, uh, I mean, too many chiefs and not enough you know, people that wanna follow anybody. Uh, you know, I heard one time, um, had this pastor that was a big, 
to me, I, I respected him, and I think he had a, a great voice. He was very articulate, uh, and we was trying to get this uh, um, this thing done for the city. Okay. And uh, he was he was a spokesman, but you had a lot of black people saying, you know, not a lot, just those with that mentality, calling them coons, and you know, I never call another brother a coon. I never call him another coon, and if I did call him a coon, if I ever had to make that kind of statement, it would definitely not be in public. You yeah. know what I mean? So, uh, you know, um, we had this guy, and I think he was very articulate, and uh, he was speaking. I mean, I think he did a great job. So they were saying, man, he don't speak for the black community. He don't speak for me. So I was saying to myself, well, why not? Why wouldn't he speak? I mean, he's not like he's he's saying nothing wrong or he's saying nothing. Man, he's actually... Have, he's actually doing a great job, I feel like, you know, but our biggest problem is doing this, coming together, yeah. coming together for the common cause. If they were, my friend always say this, uh, Bryce, he, he, he he's one of our best cooks around here. He always say this, if they were to ask black people right now on a national scale, which probably would happen right now, because right now it's kind of touchy. What do y'all want? We'll have a thousand and one answers. Mm -hmm. We can never come together with uh, with an initiative. We couldn't. We I bet they, they, ten years we couldn't get an initiative together because those that may have the vision are, are going to be pushed against by those that are saying they don't speak for us. Mm -hmm. So the the toughest problem or the hardest problem we have as a people is coming together. I remember got, in the early yeah. years of the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King parade. My pastor in church was the founders the of uh, the parade, along with many other members in our community on the board. And I remember we were walking down a particular street and someone on the sideline was like, I don't know why God doing this. It's not going to make a difference anyway. Right. That one thing stuck out to me all these years later. Like you said, there's always going to be someone or a group that says, why God doing that? It's not going to make a difference. It doesn't matter. Like, there's always going to be those naysayers. But then, always, as soon as something jumps off, then they want to jump on board. Right, right, right. I'm the kind of person I like to be a part of something from the grassroots level, from the beginning stages when it's just a name on a piece of paper. Um, and I like to see it grow from there. I like to do my part, whatever it is I can do to help right. that organization, that idea to grow. I don't want to come in when it's blooming and blossoming and say, okay, I'm a part of this. No, that's not how I, that's not how I operate. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. So I know also with your organization, Healing in the Hood, you, um, you have done several events, uh, basically stop the violence, that focus on stop the violence. And uh -huh. so let's talk about, you know, that as we, we're well, going to wrap up here in a moment. Um, Talk about what impact that has had over the past 11 years um, from the individuals that you've served, um, had conversations with, whatever the case may be, what impact has those events in your organization had on those individuals? I believe uh, we've had a great impact on a lot of young people. Um, okay. You know, you have you have uh, older people around here, older guys where, you know, when I say older, probably around my age, a little, little bit younger. Yeah. That say they say things like uh, healing in the hood ain't doing this, healing in the hood ain't doing that, healing in the hood ain't gave this, healing in the hood ain't get it. I don't see them in my hood. Well, th this is the this is the first thing. Healing in the hood ain't about what hood we in. Healing in the hood is about a mindset. Okay. No matter if if I put you in the white house or the black house, if you don't change your mindset, you'll mess that up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't, I can give you a, a brand new 2020 Cadillac, but if you're still driving in the 1979 Chevy mentality, then we might go probably not going to uh, be able to keep maintain that 2020 Cadillac. Mm -hmm. So it, it, when we talk about healing in the hood, we talking about healing a hood mindset. You know, I got friends that get out of jail and be and be happy about talking about making a a, a spread. Man, I was in there, man. I mean, I had the noodles. I put my cheese in them. I, I mean, excited about a spread. <laughs> About a pen, I'm like, man, hold on. You should be that's not you should be that's the last thing you should have been excited about. Going to the penitentiary five or six years, learn how to make a spread, you know. So we have to change our way of thinking. You know, we have I have a lot of naysayers, and I, I do understand now it don't even make me mad like it used to. I understand now that when when you're purposed 
And, and, and when, when God has positioned you for greatness, you're supposed to be talked about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're supposed to be taught. People are supposed to say things about you. If they're not saying things about you, it could be a chance that you're really not effective. You know, so so I, I so I take I, I I'm glad, you know, I'm I'm glad I, I use, you know, because without adversity, you can't climb higher. So I wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning thinking about adversity and thinking about uh thinking about things that I know people feel a certain way about me. And, and it's only because all I try to do is be better. So I'm telling some young man, some young woman that looks like me out there, don't worry about critics. Don't worry about the people that that that, that don't understand your goal, that don't understand your vision. Because at, at the end of the day, those that are talking are, aren't lifting a finger. They're mm-hmm. undoing it. The only thing they're lifting a the finger to do is point at you, Kabila. All That's right. all they know. Right. They're lifting a the finger to point at you. I'm gonna look at <laughs> Yeah, Drew, you got your hair and nails right, don't you? <laughs> I'm more than a pretty face, though. I got a little brain up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we want to tell people how they can get in touch with you. I put your email address on the bottom of the screen, but to help people where else they can find more information about healing in the hood, if they want to join okay. the organization, we, be a part of the movement. We're on Facebook. Uh, we're on, uh, I think we're on Instagram, too. Okay. Uh, I think we're on all the social sites. Uh, I don't handle that part anymore, but okay. uh, we okay. definitely uh, phone number eight seven zero six two three four seven four two. Call us anytime. I, actually, we've kind of since this pandemic, we're trying to figure out how to come back at it. You know, it, it's kind of strange right now because parents and things don't really want their children in certain areas, or they don't. You know, everybody's kind of leery with this pandemic going around. Even myself, you know, we've. We've uh, here in Blava, my my daughter and uh, my family had to quarantine because she tested positive. So we felt the effects from uh, Corona, uh, the coronavirus. And uh, so we do know that things are different. So we're trying, we're actually trying to, we're trying to figure this thing back out. So, I mean, uh, in the meantime, if you you need us, contact us. I mean, we'll put on our PPE equipment and we'll come out and, We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen now. We'll make and we have to make it happen because you know I there's been times I have to get up out of my bed, you know, to go to go uh, help someone with their child or something. And I don't mind because I love I love my people. I heard uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan his Criterion speech, and he said, "Man, his spirit sometimes is just vexed, and his spirit is because he he's he not vexed, but his spirit is just high because he just he lived for his people. He said he lived for his people, and I feel him. I felt every I felt it all through my soul." Because I love, I love people, period. And I definitely love those that look like me because the Bible does say that charity starts at home. Mm-hmm. Until I love my own, I can't love nobody else. So I have to love myself first and I have to love my own people before I can love anybody else. Right. Well, I really thank you so much for this conversation. And I know there's so many branches that this conversation could have went into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so many directions. And, you know, but I just wanted to put this, I know. Some it may seem simple, some it may seem all over the place, but I really just want to start, wanted to start the conversation. Do Black Lives Matter across the board? Do we love ourselves and do we love each other as much as we say we do? Are we going to fight as hard for ourselves, for our edification, for our uplifting? Are we going to help our brother and sister with the resources we have access to? Even if it's information, that's a resource. If you know how to start a business, you know how to apply for a job, you know how to do whatever, it's our responsibility to help each other out. So I just want to leave you again with this question to everybody. <laughs> this lives matter across the board. And this is not about the organization. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but it's right. So, goes. so any final words of encouragement from you, Mr. Sandy? Well, you know, when you say uh when you ask the question, um, um, do Black Lives Matter across the board? They kind of, they kind of, uh, it, it, it's kind of. I like, I like the way you put it because it makes you think. You just made me think when you said that, and I believe that, uh, I believe that that's something that we should ponder on. I don't really want to answer it because I think that's something we should all ponder on. And uh, if if Black Lives don't matter to you, when are they going to start? Okay, that's a good, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah, when is it going to start mattering? All right. So I thank you so much for giving me your time this evening. And so everyone that are listening and watching, share this information. That Mr. Sandy's email is on the bottom. 
Healing in the Hood at Yahoo.com. Reach out to him and he'll be happy to get back with you and answer any questions you may have or help you in any way possible. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, we business got to keep going somehow. <laughs> That's right. We got That's lives right. to save here. Hearts to heal, minds to heal, and lives to save. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, thank you so very much. And hopefully this won't be our last conversation. We'll come up with something else again to talk about. Yes, ma'am. I be I enjoy your conversations. <laughs> well, thank you so very much. And I hope you have a great evening. You too. All righty. Thank you for watching the Q Spot Podcast Video Edition. Don't forget to join the Q Crew so you don't miss a beat. Follow, like, share, and subscribe to all of my social media platforms and the major podcast platforms. And as always, pink sugar kisses. Mwah.